Okay, thought it might be helpful to show people who maybe aren't familiar with QBase how to set up certain basic functions. So, um, I'll show people how to set up and create, say, their own basic template for recording. So, if you have a certain setup that you maybe prefer to start with rather than use um, the ones that are sort of preset, which to be honest, I haven't found any of them to be useful. So I just set up my own. Um, these are mine here. So I've got like a couple of 44.1 16-bit for virtual instruments. Um, 44.1 24-bit also for virtual instruments, 48 kilohertz, 24-bit, or 88.2, 32-bit float, uh, which is generally what I'll do on my audio recording in that one. And in order to do this, you go to empty, and best, usually the, the default locations on your C drive, I never record onto my C drive, so I get it to prompt me for a project location. So I go to create here and then I'll go to random just as an example of folders. Random is usually just where I throw ideas and tests and stuff like that. So here you end up with your uh, project window. And I say you have effects and things that you maybe use all the time you could add them on here so say i always use virtual mix, mix rack and i always use the virtual mix bus so if i set it to the one that i seem to prefer group channel that put the noise reduction on take group io off um Group I.O. off allows you to adjust the gain on this independently. It won't affect the gain on any of the other channels. So say um, I go in, I create four audio mono. And on each one of those, I do the same thing. Create virtual mix rack. And I put, uh, when I switch this to group, you'll notice there it automatically changes. It, it sort of slaves to the one on the master bus. And take that one off so I can operate the input independently. On these channels, you sort of want to be riding it in the middle somewhere. As soon as you start going into the red here, you start uh, getting uh, like very, very distorted, saturated signal, which Sometimes maybe that's good, but generally speaking, it's not good. So basically you just go through and add your basic effects here. Because VMR is a channel strip as well, it's easy then to load up whatever effects and stuff you want off of uh, VMR. So you can just drag and drop your compressors and EQs and things straight onto this. And you don't have to wait for it to load up because it'll load up with your default project. Um, what I also like to do. At the minute, this thing at the top is set to bars and beats, which is good. I like to sort of record to a click, so that is helpful for me. Um, but I also like to know what uh, where I am in terms of seconds, or how long the song is, etc. So if I right click here, add track add a router track and it defaults to bars and beats 
If I drag that up to below, you see it's mimicking that one. I'll change it to seconds. So that'll allow me to know where I am in terms of like minutes or seconds. I just I find that handy. You can set it to whatever you want, but generally speaking, bars and beats and seconds are the one that I prefer. Um, if you go up to your project window and then project setup or project menu and project setup, then this will bring you into where you can set the sample rate. So 88.2 is set because that's what I um running the SIO Pro link thing at. I want 24 bit. And pretty much that's all I need to change there. There's stuff up here but recording like video but I don't I never use that so so that's all good I haven't figured out a way in, in earlier versions of QBase you could have hidden all your inputs so here I can put them on like on either side, I guess. Can I hide that zone? I don't know. It used to be it used to be that you could just hide those. But now it doesn't seem like you can. Global meter settings. Uh, anyway, basically, you used to be able to just hide all these, and it was never they weren't there. But now they seem to be there all the time. If I open this up in a full window, I can hide them which is weird but when I close this down they're all there I don't know why I can't just hide them here um you can adjust the width you can adjust the height but if you go too far down you'll notice there at that point you're Mute solo effects buttons, etc. They all lose their letter. So I find keeping it at that minimum is generally the best way to do it. Um, if you want it small, basically that's as small as you can go without becoming a bit of a pain. Let's see. So say you wanted to load up a virtual instrument you could go in here and like preload a bunch of instances of contact or say you, you know you always started with a certain setup you could load your instruments here so they would all end up all down the side here and then you would have you know your MIDI tracks here and stuff like that. Um, I do not want that. So I'll just remove that. Now, um, for selecting audio tracks to record, you just click on the track and I use the arms like this. If you want to monitor the track, you click that and then when it's on the right input, you'll get an out, you know an output through here. Um so basically you select your input whatever it's on. Whatever the wherever the signal's coming in, you select that one. Now here it's telling me like I'm getting slight signal on mono in. 
first channel. Um, not sure why I'm getting that because there's nothing connected to it, but I wonder is there a bit of crosstalk from this USB mic? Um, if you need to set up your sound card, you go in to devices, VST connections, and in your VST connections, uh, basically you create an input for each input that you have on your sound card. So you right click, create add bus, either add a mono or a stereo bus. I have eight mono buses. So I've created eight mono buses here. Um, and then I've saved that as my, uh, like a preset basically. Same with the output, I have two outputs. So I just save that as my outputs. There's other things you can do here with external equipment and control rooms and stuff like that, but again, I don't really need it. So I like to keep my setup as simple as possible just for recording, mixing, and uh, avoid going too deep into it. I just treat it like a like I would have treated an old school four track recorder, but with much cooler features. Um, if you want to set up your device for your sound card, you select the driver, VST audio system. Usually it'll, it'll select it automatically, but sometimes if you've got multiple sound cards in your computer or you're recording like I am, if you're using this software, you need to select the Sidelink Pro. Normally I'd select Focusrite Audio. You can also use these, but you'll get lag and stuff with them. Um, and then a Sidelink Pro. Uh, no, that's not gonna come up. Basically, what would come up there is my Sidelink Control Panel which would allow me to adjust the sample rate and the sample buffer. Sample buffer, the lower it is, so the lowest mine will go on this sound card 16, but I mean at 16, it's probably too low. 32 is about 1 point, 1 1.7 milliseconds. Two milliseconds is very low as well, so it's at maybe 64 at the minute i'm not sure um but what that means is you're not gonna feel the latency so when you're mixing you want to be increasing once you've finished recording and you're in the mixing phase you want to be like increasing your sample buffer to maybe 1024 or even 2048 if it can go that high and that'll lower the uh SIO usage so basically, the more plugins that you load up, and the uh, higher the track count, and the more effects that you have running, the higher usage up here will be. Um, and when it starts hitting the red, then you want to be increasing your sample buffer to avoid that. One more thing, just need to save or template so you go to file menu save as template and then type the name of your template so 88.2 kilohertz 24 bit and then hit ok and then if I close this, it'll ask me if I want to save, I'll say no. If I go to a new project, now this project that I've just saved will be here. So there you go. Hopefully somebody find this useful.